Thanks for not letting me be the only person in the room today. <laughs> Towards the end of the conference, this is sometimes a, a mystery for us, but uh, let's see. I, let me, I don't know if I can squeeze that down any. I don't know if I'll be able to. Let's do it this way. There it is. That's where I'm from. I left there on Tuesday. Yeah, this is lovely. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Grand Haven, Michigan. I'm from Michigan, and in Michigan speak, this is me. This is Detroit over here. I'm in Grand Rapids area, West Michigan area over here. So I'm close to Lake Michigan, and this is, this is what we have. 30 inches of snow in November, like 3 inches in December, and then we hit January and we got another snowstorm and all kinds of cold weather and stuff. So anyway, it's very interesting. but. My name is Dave Chizeski, and I'm the Technology Director for Jenison Public Schools. I'm not an Apple employee. I just happen to have an Apple shirt because I got to visit the uh, mothership one time and was able to purchase. The only place you can purchase Apple apparel is on Apple's campus in California. So when I was there, I did. I had to because I was there for a week-long Apple Academy. It was fabulous. So anyway, but I'm not an Apple uh, person, but I work with Apple products in my school have for years, and we're going to talk about iBooks author. Um, I, again, I said I was, I'm the technology director. I've been in that role for six years now in Jenison Public Schools. Uh, prior to that, I was 22 years in the high school math classroom there. So I took over to the tech director's role, uh, an educational experience. And as I speak, and I speak quite a bit um, to different, at different conferences, I find out that I'm the odd duck in terms of tech directors because most of them do not have an education background. They come in with hardware, wires, and all the infrastructure stuff. And so when I went to the first meeting of those people, they were speaking a language I truly did not understand. I didn't have that technical background. And they said, we're glad you're here because we don't understand your language. So we need to get together and make things better for everybody. So I've been doing that for six years and I love doing this. Um, love impacting and being able to work with teachers to do better things. iBooks author. Um, if you're sitting here and you are a Windows person uh, and expect to do this, you're in the wrong room because it doesn't work in a Windows machine. It's proprietary. It's Apple's product that you create, use as software to create what are called iBooks. Now, previous to two versions of software ago, you would create the iBook in iBooks Author, and the only way you could view that iBook was on an iPad. Now, with the updated operating systems of Mavericks and with Yosemite, you now have the ability to view the iBooks you create right on the computer. So you don't have to have the iPad anymore. So if you are one-to-one -one with kids and they have laptops, you can make this work. If you're one-to-one, -one or not even one-to-one, -one, but if you have iPads, you can make this work. You can create your books and put it out there. The interactivity is what makes iBooks Author special, and you can create the iBooks in iBooks Author, and you can create a PDF of it, but you can't play videos, you can't listen to audios, none of the interactivity is, is part of it. So Apple actually promotes this as a multi-touch kind of textbook where you're going to interact with it, and that's what we do. Now, that being said, when I uh, submitted this proposal to FETC, it was as a workshop meaning two to three hours, and they gave me 40 minutes. <laughs> Are there seat belts on your chairs? <laughs> this is going to be warp speed intro to iBooks Author. It's usually hands-on. I do workshops. Um, with, there's a, something called an iBooks Hackathon that has happened in the last couple of years, and I'm on the staff of the, working with teachers. And when we do this, we work for two, three hours at a time, Come take a break, go work on your thing, come back for another session. It's, I do these trainings minimally in uh, two hours to give you an overview to create stuff, and we're not going to be able to do that hands-on with you here. Follow with me if you've got your device, your laptop, but iBooks Author has to be created. You have to work with it on a laptop or a desktop machine, and then you port it over to the iPad, so you don't get to create or edit on the iPad. You can only view it on the iPad. So I'm going to show you features, and you are going to ask me things, please, so that you can get your questions answered so that you know what's going on, what, what to expect and how to work with this thing. Because again, in 40 minutes, 35 now, uh, we're going to have to go very fast 
to show anything and I don't like doing that real fast. So I'm going to keep it very basic and show you how it works. But I, just like with my trainings where we do hands-on and create a book, um, I start with the end in mind. And that is I want to show you an end product and then go back and show you how we build that product so you understand the different features of it. Now, I'm very fortunate that because um, it now can play on the MacBook, I can show you and demo it from the MacBook. Otherwise, I'd be up here switching back and forth between the iPad projecting and the computer projecting. Now I don't have to do that. I can go right to my iBooks application. And these are several of the books that I have in here. Uh, not all created by me, certainly. Uh, created by friends and stuff, but the one that I use when I do trainings is Famous Speeches, which is right here in the middle. So I'm going to double click on that. And again, what I'm doing is showing you doing this with the end in mind. And before I even do that, I'm going to go back just a second here, wherever that went to, top left. And when I look at that, the Famous Speeches, a piece of it, part of the training is, how do we get the word famous speeches there? How do we get Martin Luther King's picture there? How do we do that? And in, this, in the hands-on sessions, that's what I show you, is how we're going to get those things in there and piece by piece build it. So we start with a template, and the templates, if I go, <coughs> excuse me, sorry to the guys with headphones on, you start with a template, and the template I used for that one is this one over here, this vintage or this classic look. That's what we started with. And so it's a matter of putting Martin Luther King's picture on different pages and so on. And how do you move from a template that you have and customize it to what you want to do? So um, we'll get to the we'll get to pieces of that as we go through here. But here is the book with the end in mind here. And this is I'm scrolling through it just using the, the um, trackpad on here. But here is chapter one. And it, you would replace the template language and put Abraham Lincoln in here. We would put words down here to explain what's going on. And you're noticing this is in iBooks. This is not the uh, iBooks author. I'm not in the editing mode. I'm in the viewing mode. And it would look just like this on your iPad. And if you took your iPad and you went from landscape to, horror, uh, to portrait, it would shift and do all its necessary re reconfiguring so you could view it there. So we have the picture of Abraham Lincoln. Putting a picture into these things is not as easy as it seems. There are a couple of tips and tricks that I'll share with you for doing that. So we have that first page and then I move into this and it's a matter of putting a picture in here and then adding, we added the text for the Gettysburg Address and that takes uh, over some time, it takes a couple pages. But you're noticing here that we actually have two things on here that are different. And this is what sets iBooks author apart and iBooks apart from a lot of other digital media out there, digital textbooks, is that you can embed videos right in audios and all kinds of interactivity right within this book. So when I did this, we took the text from the Gettysburg Address and put that in there for students to read, but I also included then a movie. And I'll show you how that's done. I'll go ahead and play this movie real quickly here. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. All right, so there's a preview of it. Did you make the movie in our movie or did you find it somewhere else? I did not. I found it on YouTube that is what, where I searched for it. And you can embed any, if you get an MP4 uh, MOV file, it's going to go in there and play nicely. I think even a um, WMV file may convert it, whatever. Uh, I, I don't recall on that one. I usually look for the MOVs to be able to do it. But it, you put it in there, and when you play that on the iPad, it goes full screen. There are no detractors around it. You see it. And it's not your typical uh, YouTube movie with you know suggested blah, 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 and all that stuff. So you get to choose, and you actually can trim it within the system here and all that stuff. And whether you want to show the title of it, that's up to you. You can customize all that. Um, so you can very easily embed this media. And these two things that you're seeing here are called widgets. And widgets are what gives the interaction 
with the book itself. So this far, the left one is actually called the review widget. And what you can do is put in here, you can add questions. And I've got two questions in here, but you can put your questions in here and answers and then have their students, they can actually answer the questions and it will tell them right or wrong. It's not an assessment piece, it's a learning piece. So that they can watch the Gettysburg Address thing, now answer a few questions right here about it and see how you, if you understood it and if you have to go back and review, so you go back and review. But you have the button down at the bottom where you can check your answers. And you customize all of this. Um, let's see, let me continue. So I'm just scrolling through on this right side over here. I'm just scrolling through back and forth and I can see the questions and I got zero out of two correct, so, so be it. I'll move on, I created another section. Now remember the chapter was Abraham Lincoln's speeches. So chapter one, or section one was Gettysburg Address. Section two is the Emancipation Proclamation. There are tricks that we work on when we're doing this so that when I, I didn't type this, no one would expect that you would type all that text in. You're going to find that transcript out there on the internet somewhere, copy it, and then paste it. That paste feature we talk about in the, ha the hands-on session is if you just paste it, you gotta be careful because you're gonna overwrite the, th the style that the theme has when you chose the opening theme. You want everything, the, the, your content to be the same throughout, fonts and font sizes and all that stuff. Um, so when you do that stuff, and let me bounce back to iBooks Author for a second. Have you ever noticed that when you do pasting, there are two choices? You have paste and you have paste and match style. You probably have never touched the paste and match style one. You'll want to. Try that sometime when you're playing around with any program and take a look at what happens when you do the paste and match style because then you don't break the, the links, the, the system of the um, working with some of the templates. Here is another widget and I'll show you how we create these but I just want to give you a sense of how these work. So in this widget, you'll notice at the bottom of it, there are four dots. That means I have four different pictures in this thing. This is called a gallery. And you create your picture, you have your pictures, and then I can just scroll through here. So think iPad, you're on the iPad, you bring this, you tap once on the picture. So if I click on it, it goes full screen, just like on an iPad. And then I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm gonna go from one picture, from one picture to the next picture. And these are just random pictures. These have nothing to do with Abraham's speeches, as you could probably tell, but it's just pictures that I had so I can go through here. That's called a gallery widget. Very easy to create. Now we move on. I've created a new chapter, and I show people how to do that, and this one's Martin Luther King and putting pictures in here, and same kind of thing. Here is a movie of his speech. Um, I don't have, here is another type of interactive. Here is a picture, and you notice that I've got some stuff on here, uh, if I click on the picture, we should go full screen, and if I click on the horn, it zooms in on the horn, and so you can, and if I go up here to the head, um, I can zoom in, and I can put words in there, this is the bison's head, I can zoom in, so you've got some great interactivity, you can label parts of a cell, tap on this label, and it gives you more information about that cell kind of thing. So that's another one of the widgets that's uh, easy to use. This is one, this widget right here is actually a keynote file that you embed the keynote file right in the book, right in the page here, so that whatever keynote file you may have created, you can now add that to the book itself and embed it. And if your keynote file has movies, those go with it. So the whole keynote file is right there. I'm not going to take you through that one. Um, but I want one thing I want you to note here on this particular one is look at the placement of this. It's right in the middle and all the text is wrapping around it. You can do that. You can make, you can really give it a professional look as, as you go through here. Um, and that's, uh, that takes me to the end of that demo book to show you. But let me um, open up this book. This was done by a teacher who is in Zeeland, Michigan nearby me same cold territory, and she's a math teacher, eighth grade math teacher, and she's, this is her textbook on identifying linear functions. When you think of a book using iBooks Author, think little. Don't think 
book, think lesson, think unit, think really small. Can I take this unit? Is this a good candidate for creating an interactive digital textbook with it? And if you think small, it's going to be doable. If you think you have to take your entire year's curriculum and put it in a book, you're going to give up before you start. Start small, think just a simple lesson. Tara, Tara is actually her name. She, did, she has started small, but she has done it for so many years now that she has wonderful things in here. So here in here, she has seven review questions in her book right here. And kids can scroll through here. And she actually, um, when you look at the, the video, we'll play that for you real quickly. What we're going to do next in our, our next unit here is look at one special kind of function, and that's called a linear function. In the key are those first four letters. Notice line. she's drawing on there. When you look at the graph of a linear function, it's going to be a straight line. So it, okay, so I stopped that. That's, that's Tara. She's doing that. She, that's her movie. She's not going out uh, finding it somewhere else. She's going ahead and recording it, and she's probably recording it off of her iPad using, uh, I think she likes using Show Me, the app, if you're familiar with that one. There's EduCreations. There's, uh, there are several whiteboard kind of things that you can use to record your screen, and that's what she has done there. So she's embedding videos that she has created herself in here. So each of her sections, she's got some type of video to instruct. How does this impact the kid who misses a class, misses a day of class? She's really done a great job of flipping her classroom. Kids look at these things. They are assigned to do this maybe the evening before, and then they get to class, and they review it and talk about it and interact in a great way that way. So she has some great things that she has done in there. Um, she will have embedded in here more um, widgets than what come with iBooks Author. She's done a fantastic job with that. I'm going to go ahead and hide that, and I'm going to show you some of how to build. Unless you guys have specific questions for me on the end product, I'll get into how to build one of these things, because we have, you know, we're down to about 20 minutes already. So good, hands are up all over the place. Sir? And I'll, I'll share this just because they're recording this. The question is, if you customize a template for a book for yourself, can you continue to use that as a template? The answer is yes, you can. I've never done it, so I don't know the specifics, but I know that you can save it as a template. There are, there are a handful of templates that come with iBooks Author natively. There are other um, websites. If you do iBooks Author template search, uh, on the internet, you're going to find websites that you can download other templates to include in here as well. So you're not limited to just what comes with the package. Question in the way back. Have you had students design any of these books as like a presentation or their way of teaching other kids? Sure. Again, are students creating uh, iBooks with this stuff? In my district, the answer is no. And you'll find the reason quite odd that here's this guy talking about iBooks author. We don't use it in my district because we are not one-to-one. -one, and we, don't, um, we have iPads and we have MacBook Pros, but they're all shared devices on carts. And so it's very difficult for us in our district to, for teachers to devote the time to it when they know their kids aren't going to have access to this stuff all the time. But I learned how to use this stuff. I'm very excited about it, and I do trainings on it. But it doesn't work well in our district. But that being said, there are districts that are creating textbooks with, or kids are creating textbooks. And, um, and I know that the students are out there doing this stuff. And that, as a classroom teacher, there is no better way to learn this stuff than to have to teach this stuff. And when your kids are putting it together, it's very cool. Question here. Yes. Oh, Bookery is fantastic. Um, they've re they have, and I'll I'll dem or show that or feature that, um, but I won't pull anything in. Um, but there are certain widgets that are built into iBooks Author, and to see what those widgets are, I'm in iBooks Author right now. And if I go into this area, excuse me, just a moment. I'm going to launch something here to help me. And since you're all Mac people, you're going to go, what is that thing he just did? Because I do this. 
And if I go up to that location, that's where the widgets are, and I click on that, and now what you're seeing are the widgets that come built in with, the widgets again are the interactive pieces. This comes with iBooks Author. And this is what you can put in. What she is mentioning is Bookery is a site. They're actually in the United Kingdom. Some people who are creating widgets, they'll customize widgets for you if you have an idea. And because of my involvement with the iBooks Hackathon, they've worked with us, and so we've been able to use some of their stuff. They've got great things like embedding a YouTube video because these, these widgets don't play nicely with uh, YouTube. You'd have to download the YouTube video, make sure it's the correct format, and then upload it using the media thing. But there are ways to embed a YouTube video using widgets created by other parties. So there are other parties creating those things. We had a question back here. I'm not sure if we got it. Must have. Yes, sir. There is no Windows version. No? Nope. <coughs> only, only the Apple side. Well, the Windows Movie Maker is going to create a movie, but it's not going to create a book. Right. right. The second one is how can you use in the learning management system this? Pardon me? How you can use this in, into, inside the learning management system? Um, so this a book is a standalone um, file that you're going to use with uh, on your iPad as a, in the iBooks app. So you can link, perhaps in a learning management system, it's not going to be something that you would embed in that system. Okay. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. There sure is. I will show. I, will, I have a link on my resources page, and I'll show you that uh, right now. But if I do that, you guys are all going to go there and get lost and not watch. Um, the, this, the link I'm going to show you is things that were created with iBooks Author, and so I'm not sure if it's going to be comprehensive. What you're going to find is it, to put something in the iBook store, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. A lot of paperwork with Apple to be able to do it. It's got to be vetted. What these teachers are doing, the ones that, like Tara, my neighbor, she, when she creates that, she actually posts the file, the iBooks file, to her website. Kids download it onto their device and use it. They're not going to the, web, the, to the bookstore to find it. Just too many hoops to put those things out there. However, that being said, what you could do is this. And let me just launch a browser here real quickly. Actually, not a browser. Let me launch iTunes. And in iTunes, it's not going to like this size so much, but in iTunes, if I go... What I'm doing is going to iTunes U. Because in iTunes U, lots of stuff here. Again, screen size, I apologize. But if I go to the link, which is right here, K-12, these are school districts or school buildings that have created an iTunes University account. And, they can, and you can post things to here including books and, and such. I'm going to go to um, one. In, this is a school district in Michigan that is one-to-one -one with um, MacBooks. And I want just to give you a sense of what they have posted. This is Boyne City Public Schools. These are courses that they have posted on their iTunes U course and that you can put your books here and make them available. Now, this is just the featured stuff. I want to show you, I'm going to show you see all. And these are all the things that this district has. It, we're not seeing the whole screen here, but if I keep scrolling and scrolling, this is either teacher or student created resources. Boyne City Public Schools. If you want to look at examples, you go there. Because what they've done is here, right here, here's a fourth grade uh, fantastic fungus. This is a course, and Rebecca Wildman is an uh, Apple Distinguished Educator. She's the one who created this. This will be a course that you would subscribe to on your iPad and be able to use it, and it can incorporate an iBook here. You can upload those things here. 
But the, what I, Boyne City has done is fantastic. They took nibbles, fourth grade fungus. That's just a unit on fungus. That's it. And she created a full, uh, uh, that section and put it in as a course to be able to do. And she can embed all of these different types of resources, including an iBook in here. So that's a great resource for looking for things like that. So if you don't have the iTunes U account, or I'm sorry, if you don't have the iBook store account to post things, post them to your website, post them to your iTunes U account. Okay? So let's continue on here. Uh, any other questions before I move into showing you some of the how to's? Okay, in a classroom I'd wait 10 seconds. I'm not going to wait 10 seconds today because I'm on timeline. Do you know our wait time as teachers is terrible? Do you know that when, when I ask a question in my, in my math classroom, the average wait time before I move on with another response or something, well, how long is it, do you suppose? Less than two seconds. Does anybody have a question? Okay, let's move on. Seriously, the, they're teenagers and they're little kids. They haven't processed yet the question that just came to them and you've already moved on to something else. I suggest you look at your wait time sometime. Silently count to 10 when you ask a question in your class the next time and it's going to seem like an eternity. You are going to be so uncomfortable and then you're going to be surprised at how many answers, responses, or questions you get from your kids because you waited that long. Or they're going to look at you and go, uh-oh, because it's just dead silent for 10 seconds, which seems like an eternity. Okay, so that was a sidetrack. All right, let's build. Let me show you how you build this. So I've created this um, here. I'm going to start from scratch. Um, and I'm, so that means I'm going to choose a template. Some of the templates are portrait only. Some of them work either direction. So these up here work either landscape or portrait. And what that means is if you hold the iPad in landscape position and then turn it, it will automatically adjust for that, that view. If you choose portrait only, you can't turn it and have it adjust. It won't do it. It's built in to be portrait only. So let's just say I'm going to take this basic one right here. Down at the bottom of this thing, they have the 100%. I'm going to choose 100%. I'm going to say fit width so that I can see both halves of the page. This is two separate halves. And I can change text here. If I click in there, because it's that lorem ipsum um, text, when you click once, it's going to be got to highlight and get rid of all of it. So I would replace that with text or I would click on it and delete it altogether if I don't want anything there. I would click here and I would put in a title. Now when I do that, most of the time I should say, this untitled that you see right here will adjust once I change it up here. So let's call this FETC. And if I hit tab or if I click out of it, notice that that happened automatically. Okay? I'm going to show you something else that's very cool and that is this. The table of contents. You do not have to build it. It will build itself. So I've cl if I click on the table of contents, I've already got chapter one right here and then the sections are built here. This is section 1.1 which is right here, this section. So if I go there and in that section I say um, Let's see, FETC intro, something like that. And I click out of it. Like I said, sometimes it updates, sometimes it does not down there. But if I click on table of contents, it still hasn't updated. I'll go back here and here's how I've learned. This is tip and trick. You can go in there and double click on that and I'll put FETC intro. I have that disease where I can't type when people watch me. You have that too? Okay. So now when I go back to table of contents, there it is. It's automatically in there. It builds it for you. Okay. So back to this. Um, here, before I get any further into this, here's what I want to make sure you understand. When you are working with iBooks Author, iBooks Author is not where you create content. It is an assembly application where you put together what you want your book to be. You're not going to sit there and type stuff in. You're going to copy and paste it into there. When it comes time to saying, okay, I want this picture replaced that I have here, 
and I want to replace it with something, you need to have a specific place to go where you already have that picture or you're going to be, you're going to make the creation of the book a nightmare. Don't go searching for the appropriate picture later on. You have to kind of storyboard this out. I want chapter one to have these pictures and I want these pictures and I want this movie and all that stuff. So what I want to show you is right up here, I have a folder that I've created that is called I, iBook Resources Bundle. Call it whatever you want, but if I double click in there, I have that, I have this information. And what this is, is the images, the, all the assets that I want to put into this book are in one of these folders here. So I have that first cover picture. That means it's a general image. So if I click on that, I have one that I've already determined I want to be the cover photo. Or I want to be, I'm actually in chapter one, so I want Abe Lincoln one. I have determined what I'm going to do ahead of time. And this is just the place that I go and I pick up those things and I drag them into my book where I need them. Yeah, absolutely. And, ha and making sure you're prepared so that they give you a folder that says chapter one. And within chapter one, they have all of these things because there are widgets that you can use. That's why we have this one right here, the 3D models. There's a 3D widget that you can put a 3D model in there and actually rotate it and everything interactively in your book. Well then, if you're gonna do that, you better have a folder called 3D models so that you know where to go to get those resources. I'll tell you, in all the trainings that I have done, the biggest takeaway for people has been organize, do this, because it's so easy to go, you go, all right, I'm in chapter two and I'm on this thing. What is it I want to put here? Oh, I'm putting a movie into here. Where is that movie? Well, it's in my chapter two folder and it's in the movies piece of it kind of thing and it's very easy to follow. So I'm going to do this. I want to, repl and I want to replace that. Um, that current picture that you see here. So now I also have to teach people how do they navigate two different windows and have them open at the same time. So because this is drag and drop capable. So if I can find that that um, chapter one picture which is under over here it's under general images. I click on general images and it's not showing me so I'm gonna scroll. Come on here we go. Alright so I'm gonna have to do this. There's Abe Lincoln and I want Abe Lincoln 1. So now I go over here to the right side, I click on Abe Lincoln 1, I drag over, drop it in there, and I'm done. Now, there's something that I just did that you may not even notice, but I want you to look at the outline of this picture over here, this flower. Look at the outline when I drop that picture in. What happened? It turned blue. I'm going to drop it. Now where is, where is the blue? It's on the page, so if I drop that picture there, see what it does? And so what people will do is they'll go, okay, I gotta line this up and I gotta resize it so that it covers up this whole picture. And what that does is it causes a layer of pictures. Now, if you start layering, what's gonna happen to the size of your book? It's gonna get huge. So I don't wanna layer, what I wanna do is replace. And this is true in Pages and in Keynote, any of the other Apple programs you're using. When you drag over top of something, if you see those blue lines, what it's going to do is it's going to replace. And so it's a nice, easy, smooth transition to be able to do that. So there's that picture. That is true with any of the pictures you put in here. Now there's also something called masking. So if you notice the mask down here, I'm going to drag, uh, I'm going to go, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to actually do an, another section and I want to do a section, no, nope, that's not it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, anyway, uh, just th that's one of the things. If you have a mask that shows up here at the bottom right, if you click on Edit Mask, what you're going to see is a gray area around the outside. And what that's done is think of a window shade. I'm moving a window shade around here, and what I'm doing is selecting what part of the picture do I actually want to show. So I just want to have his head be showing in there. So if I do that and then I click down here on edit mask again because I'm done, 
That's all that you'll see in the book. Now, many times what will happen is you're going to replace that picture and you go, well, that's not looking so sweet. So let me go like this. Let me drag another picture in here and say, you know what? I want to see more of that picture. So you click here, edit mask, and now what you do is you resize the mask so that you're going to see more of the picture. That's true again in Keynote, in Pages, Numbers, all of those things, if you did not know that. So there, there is that piece of it. Let's see the, what really is makes the power of this stuff is the interactivity, which is the widgets. So to add any of these widgets, you simply click on the widget link up here, and you see these things show up. Media, let's, let's do the, one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to drag that in to the book and it will replace or it will fill in there. And when it does it, it also gives us this window that I'm moving around right here is the customizing widget uh, for the widgets. Um, it's the same as the inspector, but the far right corner of this is the, sorry, you can barely see it out there, but you is where you would click to customize the widget. Now right now I don't have any movies in there. I'm going to close this window just for purposes of doing this. So. I want to put a movie in there about Abe Lincoln saying a speech. Well, do I have a movie like that? Or am I going to go search for one? You better have it predetermined. So now I'm going back over to my files here and I'm going to go, well, which of these is going to have my movies? Oh, look at that. Even the, even the, um, everybody's going to pick up on this very quickly. That's where my videos are. And which video do I want? So uh, I don't, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I'm trying to make this idiot proof, right? You know, you want a video, which video are you going to get? We're going to grab that. I drag it in here, and what it's doing is it's saying it's optimizing it. It's optimizing it for playback on an iPad or an iBook is what it's doing. Because it could have been just, you know, some huge file, or it could be small, whatever. It's optimizing. It's done optimizing, and if I want to take a look at it, I just double click and it's going to play right there so I know what I'm doing. So I click again and the titles and stuff around it, if I want to, I can get rid of that. If I go back to the inspector, um, I have layout options. So here I have title, caption, background. So watch here when I click on title. Gone. Watch down at the bottom when I click on caption. Now I've got it nice and smooth in there. I don't even have to have anything. People are going to know to click on it. They'll see the video piece of it. So that's one of the interactive features you can have. Um, let's go to another one. Uh, back to widgets. Here I am. Uh, w somebody name one of the widgets they want to see. We got all of these. 3D. 3D. Okay, probably the, the least used, but um, we can do that. And so now, there I did it. I, clicked on 3D, and now it's a matter of getting a 3D file. So to get the 3D file, I go back to my resources folder. Huh, what are we going to look for? 3D models. Here we are. I click on one of these, and I want you to take note of, uh, let's see, we'll go with that. Take note of the file type. I have no idea what that means. Okay, it's DAE. It, it's one type of 3D image that plays nicely with this. Where I did my work ahead of time, and I went out to, um, if you type in, uh, do a search, you're gonna, you can do 3D models uh, kind of thing. Um, there is a SketchUp. There's a, um, a warehouse. It's, called, it's got warehouse in the name. Um, if we do a quick search, let's see. Let me go. 3D warehouse, and it's probably going to hit on that. 3D warehouse, and I'll say Google because it's from Google SketchUp. So if I visit that site, oops, I may have grabbed the wrong one. That's a forum. Here we go. Uh, I would have to be signed in to, uh, to my account, apparently. But that's where there are tons of resources where people have done 3D sketches, and then you can use them kind of thing. So there's the, there is the model. So now what I do is I drag it into here. Now, the one thing that you got to recognize is it's in there, but um, if I double click on it, it nothing's going to happen. I won't know how this looks until I put it into my book or I export my book. Now, to do that, 
Um, it used to be you had to connect your iPad and you had to do a, a preview and it would send it to your iPad and all that stuff. With the new system allowing you to view these things on your computer, you don't have to do that. What you would actually do is go up here to preview and it will actually create a model here for us in iBooks. Um, yep, we're going to do that. And so I'm going to just take a moment here. Yeah, it's just giving me some warnings. But what it's going to do is it's going to put it into iBooks. I'm in iBooks now. I'm not in iBooks Author. I'm not in my editing program. It opened the program that I have down in my dock called iBooks. So now I can actually go in here and I can take a look at what that 3D model is going to do. So you got that interactivity. So that's the 3D widget that you have in there that you're capable of uh, using. So that was just the where I got the preview. So I'm going to hide that. I'm back here. Um, let's create an, we got another page and we got more widgets. What do you want to see next? Oh, the hardest one that I find to work with. Because that's where you're putting, it's, I've, I've not had great success doing this. What I do is um, you put an image into there. So where am I going to get my image? I got my folder and I have these interactive images and so what I'll do is I'm just going to drag one of those over here and once I put it in here oh this is a story in and of itself this this is this guy was at Yellowstone um, and he did some stupid stuff like left the walkway and walked within six feet of that thing and, and talk about a, a, a fool look what he's wearing <laughs> Like if he stepped back on the sidewalk, could you figure out who it was? Right. You know, there's hundreds of people there. Is he going to blend in? They detained him for four hours and he walked away with $300 in fines for doing that. He was walking around saying, yeah, that was stupid. And we're thinking, yep. So you notice what's going on on this thing is when I click on this, it does a zoom kind of thing. So here I would double click in here and I could type, 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 and I could move this target to uh, grab the wrong one I can say move it to his hat so if somebody clicked on his hat it would open up that and it's not going to be interactive for me at the way I'm doing it but it allows you to pinpoint different things and I have a hard time getting that zoom thing it seems like it has a mind of its own when it's doing the zoom so I'm not really sure how that all goes um, we're already over time, <laughs> okay? So let me just throw it out to questions so that you can get a sense of this. Like I said, this 40 minutes is, you're barely getting a breeze of what's going on. Yes, ma'am. Were you able to duplicate your capture so that the second capture would be format Yes, so if I go in here and I've got chapter one, on this one when I add a page, what I would do is add a chapter and I would get the second chapter and it's the same theme, but now you put in the new picture and stuff. If you, if you customize the theme, uh, there is a, you, you can get in there and customize the master slides, but then when you, beyond that, as you continue on, then they, once you customize the master, yes, they will duplicate and save that work you have done. So look at. Duplicate is duplicating the entire project. Uh, if you tap on, the on the chapter here. Or a there no, there is there is not. Okay. You'd have to change the default layout for that template. Okay. You'd be messing with the template. All right, before the rest of you guys leave, please make sure that you're filling out the uh, evaluation forms for any of the sessions that you attend. Um, let me throw this back up there real quickly here, which is my contact information uh, if you need to get in touch with me for any purpose. Um, but we are over time and the next group wants to come in. Um, hopefully you've picked up a little bit of something. Feel free to use the contact information, send me emails, make a phone call, whatever it is you want. So if you need more questions answered, uh, yeah, I hope that will help. But hopefully you got something out of this. Thanks for being here. Hope you had a great conference.